If you look at countries with the most debt compared to their GDP, the USA is not top of the list, and we could say that that's a good thing for the country. That's because when it seems that a country is unable to pay the money back, it could lead to panic and hamper economic growth. According to the World Bank, the debt to GDP ratio shouldn't exceed 77% for a long period of time, or the economy will suffer. And indeed, the USA's debt is over 100% of the GDP. We looked at a live USA debt clock, and it told us that the country's national debt was almost $23 trillion, which, if you divide that between every citizen, it would mean each person owes almost $70,000. Whether this should bother the average American is something we'll look at today. Before you get worried, we should say that just about all countries have a national debt. Not every country, but almost every country. These debts are for the most part sustainable, but some countries do owe way more than their GDP. But these countries don't just go broke. A country doesn't just stand around pulling out its empty pockets saying, sorry guys, we don't have any money, can't even afford to cut the grass at the royal palace. With that in mind, how does this national debt thing work? We went to the website The Balance because when it comes to matters of money, those guys seem to have all the answers. We'll let The Balance explain the two kinds of national debt. This is what the website said. The first debt is held by the public. The government owes this to the buyers of its bonds. Those buyers are the country's citizens, international investors, and foreign governments. The second type is intra-government debt. The federal government owes this to other government departments. It often funds government and citizens' pensions. An example is the US Social Security retirement account. The federal government spends the cash, say on the military, and in the USA that's a huge amount of money. Healthcare is also a big expenditure. But when the government spends, people find work, and they in turn spend and keep the economy healthy. So in a way, it's good to keep that spending going. If the debt remains moderate, then the interest rates on the debt can stay low, and in turn the government can keep its deficit without getting into trouble. It's only when the deficit is too high and the debt becomes unsustainable that bad things happen. We're told the small increases in debt are good for the economy, but if the increase is too big, this will lead to skyrocketing economic growth. That might sound good, but with the boom comes a bust. What goes up must come down. So countries are careful not to spend too much too fast. The balance tells us that debt that just keeps rising over a very long period of time will at some point lead to a slowing down of economic growth. The interest payments will have to be paid and so at some point in time, some cash needs to be paid back lest the debt get out of hand. If things do get out of hand, then the outcome will be less spending and that will mean businesses borrowing less and people not being employed. Interest rates will also rise. This is bad for everyone. If people don't have a job, they spend less and in turn businesses lose out. If no one is borrowing because of high interest rates and fewer people are working and not spending, what can happen is then a recession. No one is borrowing and no one is buying. Now the banks are looking at this country and thinking, huh, it can't pay its debt, so we're not going to invest anything. They worry the country will default on its debt. Inside the country, you have a recession and no one wants to invest in that country. At some point, the country in recession just can't pay off its debt and this could lead to a financial crisis such as what happened in Greece. So if anyone is going to invest in this country in crisis, they will demand high interest rates. This will slow the economy and it might lessen the value of the currency of that country. The balance explains it like this. As the currency's value declines, foreign holders' repayments are worth less. That further decreases demand and drives up interest rates. As the currency declines, imports become more expensive, and that contributes to inflation. How does any of this affect you? Well, two-thirds of the US debt is actually owned by the public. The other third is owned by federal agencies. The public owes around $15 trillion, and as you know, that's around $45,000 per person. The US per capita income is $33,205, so how does this work out? If what the USA makes in one year, the GDP is less than it owes, then how come it just doesn't go bankrupt and have one of the crises we've been talking about? The answer is often other countries have a lot of faith in the US economy, so countries such as China and Japan keep investing. This keeps interest rates in the US low, and so the crisis is kept at arm's length. Now, the problem is if the debt just keeps increasing and the countries start to lose faith in the USA to pay back its debt. Experts tell us that the debt will indeed keep rising and some economists are worried that countries will soon start demanding higher interest rates. This could lead to a financial crisis in the USA. In an article called The National Debt Dilemma, this was written. 
by 2023, the deficit will have risen for eight consecutive years, the longest such streak in US history, surpassing a five-year run during World War II. On this steep trajectory, the publicly held US debt will nearly double to more than $29 trillion over the next decade. But does this even matter? Lots of countries have debt. According to the experts, it could matter because if interest rates rise, then more money will have to be spent on the debt. That can mean less cash going on things such as infrastructure, education, and research. This slows the development of a nation, of course. On top of that, how much money is spent on humanitarian operations around the world or overseas military actions will also be affected. If countries start seeing the USA struggle, they'll likely also stop investing, and this will in turn be bad for businesses and bad for the average Joe in the USA who is looking for a job. He will have less cash to spend and the economy will suffer. The very worst outcome is what experts call a debt spiral and a financial crisis. The article we just mentioned said this is what might happen after that. It could hamper the country's ability to navigate future economic crises. In the view of some experts, massive debt accumulation could undermine the US's global leadership by eroding Washington's ability to respond to future crises. We found some politicians that said the debt and the future debt is not sustainable and indeed the USA is heading toward a crisis. This will weaken the country and it might not be such a powerhouse as it once was. Erskine Bowles, the Democratic co-chair of President Obama's bipartisan National Commission on Fiscal Responsibility and Reform, said this, If I had to give you an analogy, I would say that the deficits are truly like a cancer, and over time they're going to destroy our country from within. But we should say that a lot of people don't share this doomsday scenario opinion. They say the deficit is sustainable, but most agree that it should be reduced over time. Some economists argue about this a lot, and there's an ongoing debate as to how much this debt matters. And that's kind of the current argument. Some people are asking, does the debt even matter? And others are talking about a crisis in the pipeline. Many say as long as the economy remains robust, then there's just no need to pay off the debt. The economy is pretty vibrant as things stand, and the US dollar is in good shape, so at the moment, the debt is very much sustainable. Whether it will remain so is a divisive issue. Does the debt actually matter? Tell us in the comments. Now go watch What If The US Budget Was Only 100 Bucks? How Would It Spend It? Thanks for watching and as always don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you next time.